My fire alarm is being fixed. Well, it's in, it's in the process. No, it's not. It's not even in the process. It's about to be fixed. So please, please bear with me. I know it's getting annoying now, but please bear with me. Sup? Though. Why do you want to know my name? Oh no. That was sus as hell. In nineteen ninety six the world was introduced to a new kind of scary movie. Right. One that pointed out the cliches and flaws in all scary movies that we know today. Right. There have been many sequels to the movie with another one being released in twenty twenty two. But if you think that this is pure fiction you might want to reconsider. This is the true story and events behind the movie, Scream. Hell no. Nah. I did not know Scream was based off a true story. That's big. Like a shockwave here through the University of Florida campus. You know, it really makes me fear for my for my life. I just think it's really frightening that something like this can happen in your own backyard. Well, it was really shocking. We were sitting on the floor in the dorm and um, immediately got and locked the door. It concerns my mother even more. Many continue to go to classes. Why? Why? Why did those? Why do those people seem either amused by it? Or just, just like really nonchalant, like they didn't, it wasn't like that big of a deal. You literally said that it can happen in your backyard. Like, you talking about it can happen in your backyard. Like, everybody there should be on edge. I just, I didn't like the way they were, they, they, they presented it, that, that, that information. I did not. I did, oh my God, I did not. Oh. Uh. Even though they say the administration should postpone school for a few days. I think they should until at least next week. See what happens. I mean, they should catch this guy. I'm going to take them back home. Because it's too much of a risk. A lot of people are leaving. Our whole dorm this weekend is going to be gone. Many haven't left town. But an arrest soon would pacify this anxious, nervous community. Students are arming themselves with knives, rolling pins, stun guns. You know how to handle it? No, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> All I can say is that you need to protect yourself against any intruder, anyone that you don't know in your in your apartments, in your complexes, and make sure your complexes are secure. We're trying to marshal all the resources we possibly can, number one, to prevent any further homicides, and secondly, to identify our suspect or suspects. A lot of these students are very scared. Yes, and I, I cannot blame them. Obviously, you begin to wonder how secure you are in your own home. The source within the investigation is telling us the type of weapon used is a sharp medical instrument. Body parts are missing in one of the scenes. Here again, at this point, we're not prepared to talk about specific crimes. The police yeah. discovered the bodies of two 18 to 20 year old women whose sources say are University of Florida students. Sonia Larson and Christina Powell that were caused death. death. There's multiple stab wounds to her body. We're not saying how many, what manner, what type of instrument. The question now facing police is, are these murders related? At this point, we simply don't know. Everything that happened in Gainesville, Florida happened very fast. The murders spanned just a few nights in August 1990, from August 24th through August 27th. Sonia Larson, Christine Powell, Krista Hoyt, Tracy Paulus, and Manny Tabota. All of them were killed in their apartments. Every time the weapon was a knife never a gun. Danny Rowland also had a one-man camp set up near the apartments where a lot of college students lived. He would always enter the back doors because they faced the woods where his camp was. Inside the one-man camp, he had audio diaries in which he goes into detail about his crimes, but the tapes were not listened to until there were multiple bodies because the tapes were found prior to the last killing happening. The students were from Santa Fe College and the University of Florida. These murders happened in the middle of a burglary and robbery spree in Gainesville, Florida. What he did to the bodies is unspeakable and unforgettable. He then posed their bodies in certain positions while facing a mirror sometimes. In the early morning hours of Friday, August 24th, Rowling broke into an apartment shared by 17-year-old university freshman Sonia Larson and Christina Powell. Finding Powell asleep on the downstairs couch, he stood over her briefly, but did not wake her up. 
choosing instead to explore the upstairs bedroom where Larson was also asleep. Larson was the first victim. He taped her mouth shut in order to muffle her screams. She died trying to fight him off. Rowling went back downstairs, taped Powell's mouth shut, bound her wrists together, and threatened her with a knife. He then killed her. Jesus. Rowling posed the bodies in provocative positions. He then took a shower before leaving the apartment. The family members of the victims complained about not hearing from them. The family members called the apartment personnel and police. Once maintenance personnel and police showed up, they entered the apartment. Once entering the apartment, they felt sick due to what they saw. You can see her in, in, a, in, a, in a bad position. And I just turned around and walked out. My maintenance man, unfortunately, ran down the stairs screaming, oh God, oh God, and came out and he threw up. And the sad, sad part about it is we had the parents behind us on the stairs. Eight hours later on August 25th, Rowling broke into the apartment of 18-year-old Krista Hoyt, prying open the sliding glass door with a knife and a screwdriver. Noticing that she was not home, he waited in the living room for her to return. At 11 a.m., Hoyt entered the apartment, and Rowling surprised her from behind, putting her in a chokehold. After she stopped fighting, he taped her mouth shut, bound her wrists together, and led her into the bedroom. After arriving back at his campsite when he left her apartment, Rowling could not find his wallet. Thinking that he may have lost it at the murder scene, he returned there, in which he decided to pose Hoyt's head on a shelf facing her body, and her body sitting up at the edge of the bed. By now, the murders had attracted widespread media attention, and many students were taking extra precautions. Because the spree was happening so early in the fall semester, some students withdrew their enrollment or transferred to other schools. Tracy Paulus, who was 23 years old, was living with her roommate, Manny Tabota, also 23. Many people thought that they were a couple, but they were just friends. On August 27th, Daniel Rowling broke into the apartment by prying open the sliding glass door with the same tools that he had used before. Rowling found Tabota asleep in one of the bedrooms, and after a struggle with the young man, he eventually killed him. Hearing the commotion, Paulus went down the hall to Tabota's bedroom and saw Rowling. She ran away and attempted to barricade herself in her bedroom, but Rowling broke through the door. Rowling taped her mouth and wrist, cut off her clothing, and he killed her. Rowling posed Paula's body, but left Tabota's in the same position in which he had died. With the exception of Tabota, all the victims were petite Caucasian brunette women with brown eyes. Although law enforcement initially had very few leads, police did identify two suspects. One, a University of Florida student who had a history of mental illness and had numerous scars on his face from a car accident. Making him an ideal image when discussing news about the investigation, his photo was shown repeatedly by media outlets. Rowling once told a friend that he liked to stick knives in people. That friend told his wife. His wife, when she heard about the killings, also heard about killings in Louisiana that happened. Who the hell says that shit? I like to stick knives in people. You get locked up off of sustenance. Her conscience was telling her that the person committing these crimes were Daniel Rowling, the family friend. She eventually told the police that they should look into Rowling, and they did. Authorities publicly cleared any other suspects of all charges after Rowling's arrest. Years after the murders, Rowling's guilty to all charges. His motive was to become a huge star and to be well known like serial killer Ted Bundy. Wow! Before being sentenced, Rowling was asked if he wanted to address the court, and he answered yes with a smirk on his face, him and his lawyer. He proceeded to stand up and sing a song to his lady friend who was present in court, and he sat down like it was nothing once he was done. He was eventually sentenced to death and was executed October 25, 2006. Jesus. This was the story about the Gainesville Ripper, the crimes that inspired the movie Scream. Have to give Mr. Rowling an opportunity to have a say. You have anything you want to say, Mr. Rowling? Well, sir. Can you go to the police court and could I address the court? 
I said, oh, now I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Good voice. I'm not gonna follow you, but Jesus. Cause that hell of a zone. Those eyes. Those evil ass eyes. Oh my god. Yo, that's crazy as hell though. I did not know Scream was based off of a true story. I thought they I thought they just made that shit up. That's crazy as hell. I'm glad there's nobody. I'm not gonna say nobody out there like him. So maybe it is and we just we just don't know it. Oh, I just don't know it yet. But I hope God forbid. I hope there's nobody out there like him. Cause that was crazy as hell. Um I wonder if Halloween. Was based on a true story. I know Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based on a true story. I wonder if Nightmare on Elm Street was based on a true story. Now that I'm thinking. But regardless of the fact. We got people like that. And that's that's crazy. And I think we're just going to have weird, creepy, crazy, sus, clucked up people in this world. And that sucks. But I just, I hope um, I never encounter anybody like this or I hope. You know, none of my family members or nobody that I love may ever encounter anybody like this or any crazy person or sus person or cluck person or just evil person. Just, yeah, yeah, just don't. But regardless, with that being said, I'm still going to see Scream 5 when it comes out next year. I just want to let y'all know that. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.